Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're here in Dallas, Texas, uh, the side of uh, Lake Dallas. Uh, I've asked Joseph Wesley Newman uh, to come here today, the self-taught scientist, to answer a few questions which I think that you would ask uh, if you were in front of Joe here. Okay, Joe. Sure. Okay. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming all this way. Uh, so you go ahead and ask the questions you'd like to ask, and I'll answer them. Okay, Joseph, here's one or two questions I'd like you to ask you. Okay. The, the first one would be, on the internet there's uh, a lot of very good stuff about uh, your work and what's happened over the years, but the, there's also some not so good stuff from what would your answer be to the, the critics on the internet? Well, the, <clears throat> the critics, what I have to say to them is showing they're very dishonest people in the fact that uh, all the people who've endorsed my work, all the scientists who put their reputation on the line that got me worldwide publicity, those people should be greatly respected. Now, in contrast, the people who spoke against me, I'd like you to notice something. All the people, every scientist who ever came to see me, None of them believed this technology worked when they came there and tested this machine. But they were good scientists in that they did come and then put uh, their reputation on the line, test the machine, and after they saw it, they understood the magnitude of it, and they all signed affidavits uh, that's up on the Internet. More than 40 scientists have signed those, nuclear physicists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, chemists, mathematicians. All of those people put their reputation on the line. All of them should be respected. Now, all the people who spoke against me, not one of them had the guts to come there and face me and test this invention. Not one of them. They all speak from the distance, you know, just like people who, uh, throughout history, if you look at medicine, physics, chemistry, astronomy, electrical engineering, any of it, the jewel of our civilization is its creative people. They have all been persecuted and pros prosecuted by the colleagues of their time. I studied all that as a young man, and it runs a fire in me, and I fight for the human race and for creative people. The, anyway, you should know something. Why, why are those people so gutless that they all talk from a distance, but they won't come and face me and test the technology like credible scientists did? And their names are listed. And they should be respected because they put their life's reputation on the line for you, the people who are watching this. And they, all of those scientists who spoke in my behalf, and they were speaking in your behalf, not just my behalf, but your behalf. All those scientists, they all should be rewarded and respected, and their names should be up on a plaque somewhere. I'm not worried about my name, but their names, because they all put their life's reputation. But let's go on to another question. Okay, the, the next question I'd like to ask you is, uh, we've got a lot of young scientists coming up today. Uh, what do you think uh, their vision should be of, uh, do you think that they will uh, move forward uh, with your technology? Uh, I'm certain that the young scientists are a lot more apt to move forward with the technology because they have all, all done this throughout history. It's the young people who always get behind something throughout history. It's not the status quo who stay in what I call a box. They stay inside that box, and they feel threatened if you tell them to look out of the box. Now, the young person is just like a young baby in a crib. A young baby in a crib stay in that crib about five minutes, and it wants out. It's already discovered what's in there. Well, that's the way young people are. They have always fought the status quo. They're the most apt to get behind this technology that I have tried to get out to the world for them. And I asked all young people, to do what these credible scientists do. Pull up their names and look at all the efforts that they did and got me on Johnny Carson, written up in Life magazine as David against Goliath, gave me $10 million worth of publicity in the 80s. All over the, the nation and in the world, uh, my name was, was publicized. Why? Because they knew this would help you, the young people who are growing up now. They should all step forward because this is for them. And all I'm saying is for all you, the young people, look around the world, it's falling apart. Oil and combustible fuels work no longer. Okay, we need okay. to go to another question. Okay, Joe, thanks for that. Uh, the, the next question is, uh, looking at the world today, uh, what, what is your 
your outlook for the, the oncoming future? Well, it's obvious to me, uh, and there's a lot of other people who are stating this now, which I'm proud to see them do, all doesn't work anymore. I say we got a well, problem the world here. today, you know, if anybody looks at the news around the world, what you'll see, the world's falling apart. The com combustible fuels do not work any longer. We're polluting, polluting the earth at a phenomenal a rate. The North Pole and the South Pole is melting at a rate that has dumbfounded the scientific community. It's obvious that we have at, we've added <clears throat> to the harm of the earth <clears throat> through all the pollution that we have put out over the earth and, and the rivers and the soil and everything else. <clears throat> the combustible devices work good. When we first went from the horse and buggy, you know, to a machinery, it worked good and it took <clears throat> man out of the out of the farm into the cities, <clears throat> and it made a revolution and people were happy and you know energetic about it and thought the world was going to be a beautiful place. But as all and people got more and more greedy, but what happened is the price has gotten so high from everything to fertilize the steel is tied to the cost of energy on today's market. Well, combustible devices do not work any longer. It's polluting the earth and the cost is so high that the economic condition is making the whole world collapse economically. Things are falling, stock markets fall, everything is turning upside down. <clears throat> now what I'm saying a wise person will do is look at all the facts of the world and say, well, here's a young man, the man that used to be young, that started on this invention way back in 1963. And he spent his life with it, and he's got worldwide publicity, and we did nothing to get behind him. Although many scientists put their reputation on the line about what this would do and change the earth and make it a beautiful place with no pollution. If the world had got behind those men in, in the 1980s, this technology would be around the world. We would not be in this terrible problem that we are, we're, that we are in. Everything from fertilized to steel is tied to a dwindling form of energy that is polluting the earth at a higher rate and costing more and more every year. Mm -hmm. With this technology, you can do away with the cost of energy. That means that you just like breathing air. It won't be polluted when you use this machine. Waters will not be polluted. Land will not be polluted. People will not be mm -hmm. polluted. It's something that every caring human being on the earth, even if you have been greedy, Every intelligent person who looks around the earth, you can tell the system doesn't work any longer. It certainly needs something. Uh... And, and, and what I'm saying is, of all the other devices out there, none of them can do what this energy machine to do, is, that is converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process. That's why all these scientists put their reput reputation on the line, Harry, is that when they ran these tests, they knew that I was converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process with no chance of explosion or pollution to the earth. That's why they put their reputation on the line. Forty of them, nuclear physicists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, chemists, astronomers, mathematicians, all of them yeah. put their reputation on the line for humanity. It's what they were, they weren't speaking out for me. They were speaking out because they knew how this would benefit all people on earth. The next step. And, th and this is what's ready to go forward. Yeah. Just like Dr. Swimmer is on that tape, gogyropower.com, and you look at it, he's at the end of the tape saying it's all done. Mm -hmm. All the world needs to do is get behind it and let's produce it and let's get it out there. These problems will disappear if it's mass produced in every country in the world. Make every country in the world energy <clears throat> independent of every other country in the world. So no country can be held up. No country can be like a robber on another country, on, on a whole bunch of other countries. All people will be served equally and fairly and honestly the way they should with this technology. And that's what I want for the people of the earth. That's what those scientists wanted. And that's why they screamed about this in the 80s. Yeah. So I'm saying all the people and the young people should stand up for this as they did in Egypt because the status quo don't want to change. They control everything, and that's nothing new about that. Caring people, though, should step forward because we got a big problem on the earth. It's not going to fix itself. It's like if you got a flat tire on your car. 
you can stand there and squawk about it all day long. But until you get on there and do some hard work and take that tire off and replace it and put, or, and put another one on, your car ain't going to be able to run right. <clears throat> yeah. That's the way the earth is, is right now. We got flat tires on all tires of the earth. Yeah. It ain't going to get fixed unless we fix it. And that means we have to look at it honestly. We can't put it flowered stuff in our eyes and wishful thinking that ain't gonna cut it. It's hard work. Same as I've given, same as all those scientists who've given, who spoke out for the benefit of humanity. It's ready. And everybody who sees this should pull up gogyropower.com and see how much hard work was done in it. And all the scientists that I'm talking about that all of y'all should respect, that all of y'all should put their names up on a plaque in your country because they deserve it. I'm not worried about my name. Their names should all be listed because you owe them. Okay, Joe, thanks for that. I think that's very clear. Uh, anyway, people, thanks very much for watching this video. It's just to uh, let you know exactly how Joe feels uh, that I've actually came here. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay, this is Joseph Newman, uh, the creator of the energy invention. And uh, what I want to be sure of is that everybody clearly understands what Henry's going to be doing. He's going to be representing me. Uh, he's the first oil company representative who's came here. Take a look at the technology. And I appreciate him doing that. Now, what I'm willing to do is that every country in the world I'd like to set up a manufacturing plant, make every country in the world energy independent of every other country in the world. I've given my life for this. I've always said, I believe with every fiber of my being, this will be uh, more apt to bring world peace than all the kings and queens and politicians who have ever left.